Rub up your engines! Here we have a brand new Jeep Rubicon. What do you get for the money? Well, you're gonna find out. Sure, it's a lot of money. He got a discount, but he still paid $80,000 because this has got the 392 V8 engine in it. We look inside. It's got the German HP, the four wheel drive system. It's nice and sturdy here. It's not one of these you push your little buttons. It's mechanical up here. There's a lot of stuff you can play with. The sway bars, off-road, front, rear, rear only. Bunch of auxiliary power-offs. And as you can see here, being that it's a brand new one, it's got four-wheel high, four-wheel part-time, neutral, and four-wheel low. He bought it because he wants something he can drive anywhere. And he's old enough and smart enough that he's not gonna waste his time destroying his Jeep doing burnouts. Because let's face it, what young kid has 80 grand burning a hole in his pocket unless he's got a rich daddy? <laughs> I'm sure there's some of them out there. You might wonder why people pay that kind of money for a Jeep. They used to be really cheap when I was a kid, but this is an off-road ready vehicle. That's why this particular one is so expensive. This thing is seriously set up for off-roading right off of the factory. You don't have to do anything to it. Now you know the crazy people are gonna go hog wild through all kinds of crap. You don't need to. He said he's probably gonna go bigger wheels. You go off-road, that's probably a pretty good idea. Wrap it to save the paint and stuff. This is a off-road, totally capable vehicle as it stands now. A real Jeep, you can fold the windshield down. You can pull the doors off, put side doors, have no doors. And it's got the real spare tire on the back like a Jeep is supposed to. Various levels. All kinds of room, all kinds of seats too. I like the older Jeeps. Ah, it's covered, but these are pretty comfortable vehicles for riding around in. This is his everyday driver. If you want a big laugh, I've taken my wife for rides in many Jeeps. A few years ago, I took her, she said, don't ever take me another one of these things. They ride like a washing machine. I hate them. Well, I took her for a ride in one of these. She said, wow, it really rides good now. I said, they've changed quite a bit. You get something for that $80,000. It's not like you're getting yourself an old Willys bounce around Jeep that goes 50 miles an hour. <laughs> Now, one interesting thing you'll find is... Now, there's a speedometer and it goes to 120 miles an hour. But the vehicle only goes 99. And why? With that big engine? Because it's a Jeep. Do you really think this thing is aerodynamic at 130 miles an hour? <laughs> I had a customer bring me their truck that had the Hellcat set up on it. It had 750 horsepower. Now, if that thing was allowed to go full speed, you would kill yourself in a pickup truck. It had various speed limitations. Only that one was when you started it up, there was a little computer. And when the guy had his son drive it, he'd put it in a mode that it could only go a certain speed and have a certain amount of acceleration. And then he had a secret code that he never told his son that he put it in when he could drive it as fast as he wanted to. So this already has it built in at 99. And believe me, it's plenty fast enough in a Jeep. So let's look under the hood. After the various fasteners are taken off, there's security on everything here. Okay, here is a giant V8 engine. As you can see, don't worry about this, but <laughs> you're always gonna get a little bit of corrosion on any aluminum part when they sit around for a while. And anyways, this thing lives in Massachusetts, so all of that stuff's gonna get flaky like that eventually. It doesn't mean anything. As you can imagine, it's relatively tight because it's a V8 engine. Then sixes and then V6s and now they got these big old V8s in it. So let's start her up. Well, you can hear that nice sounding V8. You better have some money though. It gets 12 to 14 miles a gallon. It's a Jeep. It's got a big engine. Nothing sounds like the V8 engines in these things. The dual exhaust. Now as we get inside, comfy bucket seats in the Rubicon. It's less than the door. Nice and solid. You can take the top off. You can take everything off if you want. 2023, so hey. You can have everything you want on your touch screen. You got your media up here, many oxes. Of course, it's got power windows. Everybody's got power windows these days. Nice setup. It goes with the Jeep. Really nice dial. The RPM on one side, but on the other. He's only got 2265. He just bought it. And we're going to take it for a little spin and we'll see how it rides compared to the old ones. Yeah, I'll put it in reverse. Nice backup camera. Pretty wide angle. Good color, too. You can see my grass is starting to get green. 
It's a good deal. I like this camera. It's got a pretty good setup on it. You can see the wiggles as you wiggle the wheel. It gives you a pretty good idea. This is why I won't run into my neighbor's tree. I'll see it. <laughs> People keep running into his tree backing out of the driveway. You can see why, see, as we're turning. There's the tree. It's still green. Now, every time I've driven one of these 8 HP trannies, I really liked it. Quiet, it's talking to me. <laughs> Volume off there. Now, we don't have to listen to it. Now, you can just listen to me. Here we go. You can't even feel that thing shift. It's 8 speed, high performance, made in Germany transmission. They're fantastic transmissions. You can see. Well, he drove on a highway here, so he got a whopping 14 miles a gallon. Well, here come all the people. We better turn our headlights on because it's raining outside. Nobody's coming the other way. We'll give it a little gas. Man, this thing goes. Woo! You got a Jeep with this big old V8 engine, man. When you step on the gas. Oh, and the sound. It's phenomenal. What a toy! And if you want to play around, we can put it in manual, we'll shift it to manual. And then we got little paddle shifters here. Here we are in second gear, give it a little gas. Man, that thing goes. These 8 HP's in manual mode, man, they shift like an actual transmission. There's no gap, there's no lap, there's no jerking. You can really have fun driving it with these paddle shifters. So you can be lazy and put it in drive and toot along. Of course, even now when you step on the gas. It gets up and goes. Woo! And we're hitting the bumps now. It really rides quite well. This is a very bumpy road. Rhode Island is known for the worst roads in the nation. They get voted top number one of the worst roads in the nation almost every year. But, hey, this hits them. Not a bad ride at all, considering you're driving in a jacked up Jeep with a V8 engine and four wheel drive. Whee! <laughs> I'd just go on and on. I wouldn't make videos, wouldn't do anything. Just drive around, listen to that sound all day. Forget the radio, turn that radio off. Listen to the car. I'd be happy just listen to the exhaust sound on this thing all day long. And it's not outrageously loud. It's not like it's ear splitting. It's got that V8 nice rumble to it. We go over the bumps, really. It rides quite well. And I slip traction. It's got radar crews. I'll tell you what, he's lucky I came back. <laughs> I should have just kept going, you know? I'll give him the keys to my motorcycle, you know? This thing is a load of fun. Yeah, it's expensive, but hey, fun's expensive these days, you know? The sound of that engine, that German transmission that's flawless, whether you leave it in drive or you do the paddle shifting, it's flawless either way. And of course, it's got the 1941 for the first year of the military Jeeps on it, and you can hear, that's a solid vehicle. Guess what? It's still made in the USA. This ain't no Jeep Renegade, a rebadged Fiat 500 four-wheel drive pile of junk. This is a real Jeep. I can certainly understand why they have it speed limited to 90-something miles an hour. <laughs> and it wouldn't take you very long to get to top speed, I'll tell you that. Still got that iconic Jeep look, be it LEDs now instead. It's probably gonna put bigger tires and rims on it. I mean, it runs fine the way it is, but to get that real look, you gotta put those big wheels on it. Now they said they weren't gonna make the V8s anymore, but now they say they're gonna make them in 2024. Eventually they probably be, will stop making V8s and it'll be a loss for these things. They're just not the same without the V8 engine. Yeah, most guys don't need them. A six cylinder engine's great for toodling around. But if you want the ultimate Jeep, here it is. Should I give him his keys back? Ah, I better. <laughs> And here's some bonus questions and answers. Bob Poppy says, I'm looking at a used 2008 Mazda 6 with 100,000 kilometers up in Canada with a clean car fix. Is it a good first car? Is it reliable? They can be reliable cars, 15 years old. So it's an older car, but you only got 100,000 kilometers. So that's what, 60 something thousand miles, right? So that's hardly any miles on it. All you want to do is have a guy like me check it out and have him look at all the data, especially the automatic transmission data. If that all shows good and it runs and shifts good, go ahead and buy it. It'd be a good first car. They do have somewhat weak transmissions, but any mechanic can tell you what shape it's in now. And that is low mileage for a car that's at all. It could be a good car. The newer ones are even better. They got a deal going with Toyota and they're sharing technology and they're even better. But if it checks out okay with the mechanic, it could be a very good first car. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, 
Remember to ring that bell!